Hey guys, hope you all are well. Welcome back to this week's product of the week, where we're going to be talking about the Creality CR Scan Lizard. Now, there's a lot of videos on YouTube of how to work this thing, advanced settings and everything like that. But what this video is basically going to be is for the beginners, for the people who just want to say, hey, I just want to scan something, print it and replicate it. I don't have the time right now to learn all the fancy settings. Help me just get going. And that's what we're going to do here today. So if you guys want to do any kind of other stuff with advanced settings, there are many, many videos out on YouTube about how to do that. We're not going to be doing that here today. Today we're going to be doing just for the people who want to just get going, find out how to do it, not how to do it better, not how to do it perfectly, how to do it. If you're struggling to get the scanning going, if you're struggling about how to actually do it, we're going to run you through that here today. First things first, let's have a look at the packaging and see what we get. So we get a really, really nice case over here. It has a very, very nice feel. I like that Creatly has given you something like this that you can actually hold on to and use for the longevity of the scanner. It's not something that you're going to want to replace for a better one anywhere down the line. And I'm very, very happy that they've done this. Open this guy up over here. We're greeted with some manuals and some papers and this is a really thick case. So let's see how it goes. So manual side and inside here we have our bed. That over there. A little bit of Velcro tabs, and we do have a zipper inside here with just some silicone packets and your USB. From there, we're greeted with a really, really nice packaging. I'm very, very happy to see this that they put specific spots in specific areas with specific padding around it. Let's see how it goes. So off the bat, here is our scanner now. Compared to the last 3D scanner that we had, this is really, really small. Let's have a look on this camera over here. Very, very small scanner. It's actually quite heavy and it doesn't feel like a cheap thing at all. I'm actually really happy to see that. We are now greeted with a bunch of power adapters, depending on what country you're in, anything like that, depending on what you're going to use. It's obviously the base of the bed. So this plate over here will go on on top of that. And that is what will spin. Another thing to note about this, it's actually a little bit different than other ones that we've seen before. Let's go to this camera over here. It actually has the grooves like we're used to, but it also has these weird letters and markings on it to help you or to help the scanner actually register everything. So if we go closer, very, very nice. We're going to see how that registers because a lot of people who have used 3D scanners, they know it is not as easy as it sounds. Now here is our handle or our stand. Very, very small. I do think that you could use this with a little um, side setting that it has over there as a nice handle for the handheld feature. Uh, we'll see how that works in a little bit, but overall I'm actually quite underwhelmed on this stand. Um, it's plastic. It's, it's not actually quite premium in my, in my opinion. The last scanner that we had actually had a really, really nice stand. And it was something that I was actually impressed by. I, was, I said, whoa, that, that's really cool the way that they designed it that way. It was a black aluminum uh, stand that folded out from the top out, extendants up. Can this one extend? Let's have a look. Yes, it can extend. It can extend to about that high over there. Look, it's going to do the job. It looks like it's actually quite well built, but I'm quite underwhelmed in comparison to the old scanner. Um, but it still is nice. It does feel nice. It doesn't feel like it's going to break. And that is quite important. Next, we got a bunch of cables. So half of a power cable, so, some more cables and some more cables. Okay, so we're going to grab our power um, adapter and we're going to slot it in 
over there and it has a little tab there to release change it out or to just package it out that's quite nice all right so we're going to actually just assemble this i'm going to show you guys how it would look when you have it going and then we're going to get into the video of us actually scanning something what we're going to be scanning today is this remote we're going to see if we can replicate it and print it it's quite a unique shape it has solid edges it has curved edges it has buttons so let's see it actually even has a shiny bit in the, in the um, tip of here so we're going to see how how that is going to scan and how well we're going to put this scanner right really to the test let's set this up let's see how it goes So yeah, like I said, I do believe you can take this and divot it in like that and use this in this orientation for the handheld scanning. Um, I think that will work quite well. I have seen a lot of YouTube videos where people actually um, 3D print a whole handle that encases over this uh, scanner over here and has a handle at the back of it. But I don't understand why you would do that if you could just do this right here. Um, I really can't justify that unless this is not a good way of scanning it and they do want some ex some extra stabilization or something like that but let's carry on here so then we would open up the stand extend that up like that we obviously have our item over there This is one of the things that I picked up on. I was quite worried about bending the pins inside this cable. If you are as well, it's quite easy. So it actually has a little release pull at the back for you to actually take it out. And there's a red marking on the port over here and a red marking on the cable. So you line those two up just like that. And there we go. Now we do have our power cable going directly to our scanner. At the end of this cable, we are met with two separations. We have a USB and it looks like for another import over here, a female connector. Now the USB obviously goes into your computer and that's where your scanner registers into your computer side. So this guy would go into your computer and this over here, we have a male port that goes inside and that's for the power so this will power the entire thing so hypothetically speaking now because we're not going to do it right now this is plugged into your pc this is plugged into a power source so we're gonna just put that right there for now and then this cable over here is specifically for your bed now you plug this part into your bed and this part into your laptop or your computer again and what i noticed is not like other scanners if the bed is plugged into the PC, it just spins. Now, I have not seen an, um, an effect, the scanning quality or anything like that, even if you have to do a second scan and it starts at a different point, I have not seen it affect the quality of the scan at all, so don't, you don't have to worry about that. So, into the, into the base, into the PC, what do you do from here? Basically, right now, you grab your USB, and you plug it into your computer and there is an installation file right there for the software. Now I wanna give a full disclaimer over here. I have a MacBook laptop and this did not work on my laptop, laptop at all. It did not wanna download the files, did not wanna download the user face for me to actually use a scanner. So I went onto some forums and I found that uh, you, there's on Creatly's website, you can download um, the operating system for Mac, for the Creatly scanners, even the Lizard over here. I downloaded those and I came into a lot of troubles. I searched the web, I searched for YouTube videos and I actually did not find any helpful videos on how to actually get this guy installed on a MacBook. So I'm not telling you it cannot be downloaded on a MacBook because obviously Creatly is telling us that it can off of their website. But I did not get it right 
and actually had to end up using a Windows PC and start going from here. So you'll see in a minute when we do the scanning, I'm in a different environment because I'm using a different PC. I had to use a Windows PC. So before you buy this, if you have a MacBook, quickly please do some research, find out how exactly to download it and get it working because the exact issue that I had, I downloaded the software off of Creality's website, but it wanted a calibration file and I could not find a calibration file anywhere in the download that I downloaded and I really got stuck at that point. Switched to a Windows, downloaded from the USB and it was easy from there. It was super, super simple. So just a disclaimer over there, I'm saying to you, you might struggle with a Mac PC. Quickly just do some research on that, see if it's something that you are able to get over and move forward from there. All right, you guys, we're gonna quickly go to the other side of there where we did the scanning with this thing. We're gonna see how it scans, how to do it, and what does it look like. So as you guys can see over here in our Windows PC, we're loading up the software. We're gonna be selecting table mode over here, not hand scan. On the left hand side, you guys can see we're using texture, brightness is very important, and we're doing a high frame rate. On our preview, basically what this is, is that it shows what it's basically seeing. And you can see there, as we place the item, it shows a contrast. We can stop the preview and we can click initial. This is the second step now. Now in our initial, it, everything that is red, it shows it's going to disregard. And everything that is blue is what it's actually successfully capturing. If we go to our scan, as you can see right here, there it starts. And now all these green dots is basically certain points that is building up to create our image. As you can see on the left hand side, our brightness is on max right now. And our other screen on the top right, you see that it is very, very bright. The brightness is very, very important depending on what you're scanning. So it's going to be a different setting for each item. This is a really nice feature of here. So basically it's building the bed and it's building the item that we're busy scanning. You can see it's even grabbing the buttons. As it's doing this, it's gonna finish right there and it's gonna load in. Here we have a successful scan. All the red is now it's gonna disregard. You see I'm flipping it over because on the left hand side, we've selected append. Now what append does, you give the file a name over here and append is going to allow you to do a second scan. So we flip the remote on its side to get another axis of scanning of this remote over here. As you can see, once again, now it's grabbing that remote. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the table does not stop turning as long as it's plugged in. And like I said, I do not see any kind of fault or uh, difficulty in the actual scanning because we will see in a little bit for now, we're getting a very, very nice scan over here. Once again, it's building up the item and the bed. What's nice about the bed with those markings and those grooves, it registers that that is the bed and it should automatically remove that for us. And here we are with our two scans. On the top right, you see scan one and scan two. Right click on scan one and say load scans because you see there right now it says zero. So we load them both in. And as you can see now, we have two different items over here in different orientations. What we have to do is go into this menu over here and say create marker pair. You use the right click on your mouse and click on specific points. Here we're using that reflective beam in the middle and we're gonna select over here what this does as we're busy struggling over here. What this does is basically as you create all these points and you select a line, it'll pull all these points together. And if you do this correctly, you should get a perfect alignment. There you see we've grabbed the front of both sides and it's created a line. Let's grab another side over here. So let's maybe go for the bottom side of here. Let's try and get a nice angle. There we go. On the second one, on the second scan over here, let's grab that again. So I believe that that is quite nicely aligned. Let's go for one more. Collect, create, mark a pair. And we're gonna go for that bottom button. I think that's a nice uh, register point over there. Make sure that we get it nice and aligned. There we go. Now on the left hand side, you see a line came up. As we click a line, it creates both scans into one solid pair over here. That is how you can collect multiple scans into one item. 
the more scans you do, the better your outcome is gonna be on your scans. So if you do five scans, it's gonna be better than two scans. And as you can see over here, we've gotten a really, really nice render over here. This is what we have captured. And there you have it, you guys. We've done a successful render on the CR Scan Lizard, where you can take an item and replicate it. Now, it did replicate in exactly perfect sizing as well, and I was very, very happy to see that. It, like I said, the more scans you do and align them, the better your outcome is going to be. We did two scans on the remotes, we aligned them, it came out really, really nice, but there was a few flaws on the actual saving of an SDL file and printing. It didn't grab all those walls perfectly smooth and all that kind of stuff. And that stuff will be improved by doing multiple scans and everything like that. So just two scans and you're gonna print something, it's gonna be a little bit iffy. Do some more scans, line them up perfectly over there and it's gonna do it great for you. Like I said, there are thousands of videos on YouTube of how to get perfect settings, how to get perfect scans and everything like that. This video was a simple video specifically for the people who just wanna start scanning. How do I start scanning? How do I make it work? That's what this video is for, so don't, um, don't take me out in the comments over there saying, oh no, I got better scans. Yes, we can do a better scan, but this video is not for that. Like I said, there are hundreds of videos that can already explain that kind of stuff to you. This is just a breakdown version for beginners, not for the advanced people, for beginners to start scanning. The CR Scan Lizard is down in our description in a link. It links directly to that product. There's also a link to our website and there is a link to all of our social medias that if we do any other content in the future that's too short for a YouTube video, we post almost daily on our social media. So if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff and you wanna see some cool new tips and tricks and fooling around and jokes and all that kind of stuff involving 3D printers, CNCs and lasers, I highly recommend that you check that out. Follow us, it'll really, really be well appreciated. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you guys enjoy this content and wanna get notified for the next time we have a video. I hope you have a great time and I'll see you next week.